Hello, good morning so together. Um, I've always to do with a lot of young companies that promise something and uh, with this promise investors should be uh, enthusiastic and buy into the story. Um, when I sat down with, with Marco like three years ago, he promised something and I think that is one of the few cases where the promises have been overachieved. So Marco, I'm pretty impressed with what you've done. Um, can I see my presentation? Great. So <clears throat> within the 15 minutes I have, I would like to share some thoughts with you which I have on the ecosystem. Like two years on the first conference, I discussed with Marco a little bit about the ecosystem and at that point I was pretty skeptical about the ecosystem, but I think a lot of things have developed and therefore I would like to run you through some ideas I have. So I would like to start with something like, I call it a sentimental journey. Um, okay, so I tried to see what are the different stages we ran through. So I started in 1994 with AOL and at that time, it were mainly only U.S. companies coming, and in Europe, it were mainly ISPs that were <clears throat> entering the field. So the next phase of the industry, the bubble burst, and we saw some companies in Europe that were starting to build consumer-facing businesses for themselves that were mainly designed at the beginning for the, for the local markets. And these companies were the first step where we built our own ecosystem. Yeah? So where the, where the companies built at the same time like the investors build, uh, community built themselves. Mm. And we learned and we built our ecosystem. <clears throat> then we have the next phase where we started to, um, to have a broader vision. So we dared more. We entrepreneurs were second time entrepreneurs and the learnings that in the US people have made over a decade were also getting into the companies that uh, were built here. So I think now we have uh, developed, we have uh, managed to go a great pass here. We have great companies in, in, um, in Europe, but now it's the question where are we today and what are the components that make the ecosystem successful and what is the status on these ones? So luckily, above the line, these were the companies where I'm involved. So I'm also pretty proud to have been part of some of um, their phenomenal stories. So look, I mean, when, when I thought, what are you gonna talk about? I think since it's the first speech, Every, I would start at a helicopter view and say, where is the ecosystem, where are the capital markets, uh, where do we move? Uh, and the picture is, it's pretty interesting. So I saw, started to say, uh, how many public companies have we in the internet space purely, um, and put it into relation to, to the population of a country. And <clears throat> as we see these numbers, the, the difference doesn't look that bad. Uh, um, amazingly, China has made a very rapid growth. Also, they are around for a very short period of time. However, the picture changes a little bit if we compare market caps. Uh, so I'm <clears throat> I, I think it is very important to look at these market caps because these are the companies that will buy other companies. These are big companies that shape the industry rather react to it and therefore I think it's a very important measure to see and to judge the health of an ecosystem. The question is where are we? And it's a rather disappointing question because the cumulative market cap of internet companies in Europe is excluding mail.au is only seven billion dollar. So this is <clears throat> a little bit in, this is a little bit surprising. Um, the next, correlating to the market cap, I looked at the way is, for that is what is really driving industries are the titans. So the titans, I look at companies that are majorly stock listed, which are so big that they shape or clearly lead an industry. 
And if you look at this picture, uh, you see that with the Facebooks, with the Googles, with the uh, Yahoo's and Ebay's, the US has these titans. And finally, the Chinese have been able to build these titans for themselves as well. Yeah. And even Russia has it with, with uh, Yandex, with Mail.ao, with Osnoglasniki. They have it. The only ones that haven't yet built these kind of titans um, are we Europeans. So the question is, when it comes to likelihoods of building these kind of titans or shaping the uh, ecosystem, what does, it, what does it require to, to, to be competitive? <clears throat> I think uh, the first thing what you can see is uh, you need a clear identity center. So Israel and the US, they are so strong because they have Silicon Valley and they have the community in Israel. Um, the next step, what I think has amazingly changed even the last two years, is the speed with which business to consumer facing model will are rolled out on a global scale. So you, the, you immediately see when there's a good model, uh, a big force drives it in the US, which has a large home market, and then there are several entities um, replicating these models and driving them in different geos. And the third is, how has our financing system uh, developed? So the first thing, I'm very, very happy, and I hadn't really anticipated it. Um, from my judgment and observation, I think Berlin is doing a great job now in attracting people and establishing itself as, as at least in Germany, but I could imagine also for on a European scale as the hub. Yeah, in the last trip I made to the US, Two, in funny, funnily, two big venture guys independently told me, well, Klaus, it's the first time that a city feels like Silicon Valley, and that's when we're in Berlin. And this is supported by some numbers here. I tried to put it up with some numbers. I think you have very moderate cost and salary levels. So if you do a startup, salary and rent are very important elements to it. And um, <clears throat> that's where Berlin is in perfect shape. Secondly, uh, Berlin has a very vital um, ecosystem in terms of young people wanting to achieve something. I draw up on a quarterly basis the net uh, movements from 20 to 35 year old. And as you see, there's a constant influx from people wanting to go to Berlin. And that is even more impressive if you look at the international moves. So we have companies in Berlin, and I think we have people there with 18 languages, so you can easily do all the call center activities worldwide out of Berlin. So next, next point. <clears throat> when I think there has been established a new necessity for accelerating growth and becoming big very fast. Because what has happened in the past is that when everybody looked at his home market, the US companies had time to build their home market. And we were doing a German home market and a French home market and a UK home market. And by the time <clears throat> globalization happens, is that the US companies have a completely different marginal cost structure than any of the way smaller Europeans, and so we have a very uneven way to, to, to compete. So <clears throat> there are two ways where it is different. The one is that you have global companies by day one, like the Skypes or the Big Spons or Rovios and Spotify, or you have, on the other hand, with companies where you have special, um, where, which are more execution-based, and there are something I think has changed. Uh, so these normal business models have been executed uh, country by country wise, and that's why we always had this, this marginal cost pr um, problem. And as a consequence, none of these companies has grown so, so big that, <clears throat> that it is a, a mere titan so that, that you, he is shaping the industry. I think we're seeing now with on the one hand, Rocket Internet driving this development, taking a model like Zalando and globalizing it, taking a model like Groupon globalizing it, and even 
uh, doing it in a way that it makes more revenue than Groupon itself. The same have we, we have done the same with Springstar. We have built a network of shopping clubs in Australia, India, Arabian Emirates, Brazil, Turkey, uh, Switzerland, and Mexico. And immediately launching this is the same we did with a group of couponing models, yeah, in which we are still bigger than Groupon in most of the countries where we are. Um, so there's a lot of merit in looking at rolling out these businesses globally so that you immediately get a scale that is comparable to, to um, US peers. Yeah? Um, and I think with Springster we got some recognition doing it uh, so that um, the Airbnb guys were very happy and we also are very happy that we worked together on their global rollout. Um, the last point on these corners is the financing environment and still some thoughts on, um, on how does the system work and where are we and where do we need to improve. Um, <clears throat> so here you have an overview about how much money is invested per capita per hub. Uh, so I think you clearly see that the main cities that function as, as the epicenters in Silicon Valley and Israel, now it's getting pretty obvious why all the innovation is, is generated out of these countries because they are, in comparison with the rest, flooded with money so a lot of people can experiment and, and, uh, um, and try something out. <clears throat> so here is another very interesting um, chart. So I think the most amazing number here is not the number of investment rounds or investment capital per se. I think the most interesting number is the median round size. Uh, that means whereas we European companies get an average $2.94 million, US get 4.75 and China is 10. I don't know exactly how they, they calculated this average, but for nicer Chinese companies, it is not rare that a better A round is a 50, 40 to 50 million pre-valuation. Meaning these companies start in a region where it is very easy to, to roll out because you have such a, high, such a big home market. And in addition to that, they are uh, equipped with a lot of money so that they can also <clears throat> build their company pretty fast. So I think that is a big differentiator to what we see what is happening here. So um, how do we deal with this? Well, when I, when I ask myself, in what way can I react to it so that I can um, take advantage of, of the situation that we have? So first is in terms of investment-wise, I would still encourage a lot of young people to go for own ideas, to go for uh, more technolo technologically based startups. And it, I think it's also important that we bring together technical universities and, uh, uh, and uh, business schools because it has never happened so far. So if our ecosystem concentrates on more technology based startups as well, which are by definition global, I think we can overcome some of the hurdles. The finance problem, I think it is a <clears throat> also I observed that a lot more US companies are coming to Europe with the success stories we had. Um, it is still a lot of room for, for improvement so that I uh, set up a vehicle for, for our group where we are in, able to employ large sums of money once we identify a model and want it to take it global that we can immediately invest 20 million per business model. And thirdly, we have, through the rollout of the shopping clubs and our couponing businesses, we have now two and a half years of ex, uh, experience in operating in Australia, the Arabian Emirates, Turkey, uh, Brazil, and Mexico. And we formalized that a little bit in, for, in founding Springstar, which is a kind of a, a rollout uh, engine. And uh, we have something like 30 offices in Delhi, in Berlin, and in Sao Paulo right now, and Turkey and um, Australia to follow. We have something like 30,000 square feet of offices there. We have 1,000 people in our 
in companies that work there, um, and two and a half thousand people are employed in, in total in the group that we have. We want to use this structure that we build in order to help young companies that want to go global yeah, to, to come to us and uh, so that we can tell them here is enough money for you that you can do the global approach and if, if we agree then within two or three weeks we can take out people from all these offices and make them work for the new company so that we very very quickly get to a global scale of these companies. So <clears throat> here you still have an overview about where we have been and which op companies we operate or operated. So to sum up, I think um, the ecosystem of the European in in ecosystem, internet slash entrepreneurs slash uh, VCs has made a big, big jump the last two years. Um, we have a lot of raw models which we can look up to, uh, uh, fantastic executors like, like a Daniel Egg. Um, so that is really fun working with these guys and it's also something that triggers new young people out of these organizations but also outside of these organizations to replicate these models and to, to be self-starter. Um, on the financing side, there <clears throat> is more to be done but the frequency of US people come over increases and with these exits, all the numbers will look better also in their portfolios and when then more exits happen then it is a self uh, a positive spiral that more uh, people want to invest in this ecosystem. So all in all I'm way way more optimistic of how our ecosystem um, will go forward. I think this industry is a multi multi billion dollar industry. We are totally over or under performed in capturing this industry, so we have to work on that so that we stay European companies. Um, but once we, we get aware of it, I'm sure we'll also achieve it. Thank you very much.